Hello there, welcome to the video. This is episode two of our Candle Makers podcast. And today we are talking about candle branding, brand building, reputation, and how to get customers as a new candle brand. So Michaela's got her candle brand, Smoke and Matches, which is about a year old. I've been doing this for about three years. So we just talk about our experiences and what we are doing to get customers. So coming up, all of that stuff. So let's get into the video. So the first question I have for you, well, today we're going to talk about marketing and where people get most of the customers and sort of what has worked the best. So really for you, where have you got most of your sales from? Are you leveraging your existing sort of YouTube audience, social media presence? And have you, how has that helped you create your brand initially? Definitely. So, um, I mean, it would be stupid to think that we'd not benefited from the fact that I already had an existing audience. And although my audience, it like on paper seems large, my core audience of people who watch regularly is really quite it's kind of more condensed these days it's a smaller really more engaged audience and we definitely leveraged the people who would want to support me initially just to kind of launch at first um mm -hmm. it was it was something that I was kind of worried like I don't want to have to sustain an entire business on a YouTube audience because that's not gonna work um we want to yeah. obviously grow it past that it's difficult to say as we grow and as we get more orders how like percentage wise because it, it's impossible to know um, but i would say a, still a large percentage we're maybe eight nine months in um still a large percentage of our sales are coming from my pre-existing audience oh cool so, definitely a good way to kick start the a snowball isn't it so yeah it's 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 nice to have that initially but i definitely when we first 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 launched we just launched like a little mini box of like three core scents these are going to be our melts and we sold them out straight away and i was oh, wow. concerned that well there are going to be people who are prepared to support regardless of what you do but they're not going to mm -hmm. come back like they'll yeah. you know you'll be like oh i'll help my friend do this thing but you're not going to continue past that and so I was worried Karen was my business partner was very like oh this is great and I said but I'm just scared that that's going to be you're going to get a real spike and then we're going to think this is a thing and then it's going to all drop off because they're not going to keep doing it every month yeah. that that was a real concern for me but we've had so many repeat customers which is amazing um that it, I am starting to feel a little bit more confident about the product the business model in general now that we've had more people find us that's good yeah getting repeat customers is really the goal isn't it i know you probably haven't done much paid marketing but if you can get people that just keep recurring and keep buying that's kind of the holy grail of customers yeah do you think that's because your product's good i know that's a bit of a no but that's, weird <laughs> that's a yeah. fair question because that is the issue with having an existing audience that want to support they will mm -hmm. give you a boost initially, but it's a bit like giving something to your mom. Your mom goes, oh, I love it. It's great. But is it, or are you just saying that it's great because you want to be nice? You never get that sort of um, unbiased feedback, exactly. or at least hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, it's really difficult. So then the more we got repeat customers, and I'm talking like some people have placed more than 10 orders in eight months, oh, wow. which yeah. is serious repeat custom. Um, I just thought, and people have like purchased things and sent them to different addresses, bought them as gifts. It gave me a little bit more confidence in the product that we were selling. Um, I would say the one negative, having an existing audience for pretty much anything is that where you start from zero on a normal, in a normal business, you start from zero, you're building your client base from literally nothing. Those people know nothing about you. They know nothing about your product. They have no pre-existing idea of who you are you have got a little bit of a grace period to learn the craft and to make yeah. mistakes and to um kind of find your feet a little bit whereas when you've got people who already know you it's almost like starting a business in the middle and the expectation is so much higher like they're buying into in their mind kind of a an established brand that is me yeah. Although the product and the business is new, starting at that, you you kind of the pressure is so much higher 
to to be a great product but also for the service to be fantastic um I I have not had any kind of if anyone has had an issue at all I've refunded them and replaced the product yeah. because I feel the pressure yeah. yeah the pressure of a service and a product is so much higher so it's real swings and roundabouts of having yeah. that audience already how how did you find obviously you've done FBA and you've done um other kind of sales and stuff previously but how did you find it starting from literally nothing like build because I don't I don't have that experience of starting from nothing yeah, it's pretty difficult to be honest I didn't really know what I was doing in the beginning so I was just doing a load of random stuff and just seeing what stuck so really I started off on Instagram and Shopify maybe Amazon at the same time my, my initial plan was just to try and tap into a market on Amazon I know there's a lot of people on Amazon, a lot of people buying stuff. So I figure if I can get something or get at least one sale, then I can get more. So if I can sell something once, that's kind of it. That kind of justifies people will buy it at least anyway. So it took a while. It took maybe a couple of months to really get a couple of sales on Amazon. And once you start selling a little bit, they sort of start crawling up the rankings a bit. So I've got, got a gin and tonic candle which is quite a low competition keyword on Amazon. There's not many people selling it. But every time someone types in gin and tonic candle and someone buys it, it will boost it up a little bit. Hmm. But I was selling a few of them a month. But I started trying to build a bit of an audience on Instagram. I started going around following people in the local area. My initial initial plan was to kind of be like middle-aged ladies that are slightly well off and go for that kind of farm housey kind of Chevy cheeky vibe. So I started going around just following lots of people like that and farm shops and things. And I started building a bit of a bit of a following. You'd go to a profile, like a few of the photos, follow them and they tend to follow you back 50% of the time. But I made a few sales from that and I still get a couple of sales from some of the original people, but it, the best way to describe it is just a grind, a big grind in the beginning. Yeah. Every little thing you do, you don't really see any result immediately. So it might be something I do now that might pay dividends in six months or a year. It's all very little immediate reward, if that makes sense. Totally. So. But see, the social media part of it, because um, I'm kind of only just getting to grips with a product business-based social media versus a yeah. uh, because I, I was already a, on YouTube when Instagram became a thing. So I've never had a personal Instagram account. I've only ever mm. had like a, a YouTube Instagram account. So transitioning now to try and create something that's trying to engage customers rather than just people yeah. who like me from other places is a real strange thing. So what, what would you say have been... Um, the most successful things you know with like trying to build a social media following because it feels like that beyond amazon just randomly finding you on amazon and sales mm. and stuff like that you've built a really good base on instagram which is difficult to do especially for a, a can it's a very specific business yes it is yeah very yeah. difficult i think in the beginning well i was just trying to make nice candles i think i've touched on that a lot recently just trying to make nice candles and just hoping people would buy them because they're nice candles and they look nice I think that was just a bit too vague. So now I've started tapping into a bit of a bookish theme, though maybe slightly more fantasy-based candles and sort of candles based on classic books, that kind of stuff. I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've kind of gone, especially Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I've channeled everything into. I started to get a bit more traction recently and get a lot more sort of likes and engagement with that kind of stuff. So I've got like a shire candle which is based on all the rings and i started like i said started to get a bit traction on that so i've kind of doubled down on everything so i'm probably going to slowly start phasing out my other scents like things like fresh linen and lavender which are nice but they don't really stand out anywhere so yeah it's kind of just going all in on that one thing for a specific group of people there might not be the biggest audience in the world, but if I can get 10, 20,000 people that are really invested in me and my product, 
it's going to be better than a million people that aren't really that interested. So it's really, really just trying to get people that resonate with what I'm doing and it becomes a bit of an extension of them. So there's a lot of like bookstagram accounts and that's kind of what I've tapped into. I didn't really realize it was such a big thing. And honestly, yeah. there's so many different accounts and they're all very like aesthetically pleasing. And I quite like doing those sort of flat lay photos and things like that. So it's just kind of building on that and just trying to find a very specific people and just mm -hmm. going in with that. And that's, I think the last month or two, I've maybe gained 300 followers. Some of it's from paid ads, but they do show up and I get a lot of likes from that. And some of it's just people finding my reels and things like that. So I think being very specific helps rather than trying to cater for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, from personal experience, when I was initially on YouTube, I used to be called Miss Budget Beauty and this was 2010. Mm -hmm. So we had the financial crisis in 2008 and it was just complete dumb luck that I named my channel Miss Budget Beauty because I was on a real budget at the time. Yeah. And um, it, I think that the name alone found a lot of people. So it was a real slow burn to get a decent number of people to follow me. But my initial, and over time, like I said, although on paper it's a large following, the actual people that watch on a regular basis, it's a much, much more condensed, smaller, engaged group of people. And that has so much more value than hundreds of thousands or millions of people. Yeah. People who are, well, just the fact that we were able to launch a business off the back of a very condensed following is because they're so, so engaged. Um, so I agree. And niching down is, it's frustrating because you can't please everyone. Like you say, with lavender and the linen, yeah. we get a lot of people saying, well, will you do this? And will you do that? And we were considering doing like a citronella for summer. And I think you have to decide what your brand is because you can't be everything to everyone. You're not going to be Yankee Candle. Yankee can Candle can sell. They have something for everyone, but they're so huge. They can do mm. that. In order to grow, you have to be something different. Yeah, definitely. That's a difficulty I've had. A, I think over the time, maybe at one point, about 20 different scents. That's 20 different bottles of fragrance oil. That's 20 different labels, 20 different CLP labels. It's 20 different things to have around. And I sell out of one, then I top up one, then it's constantly like up and down with all of them trying to keep it a float yeah. whereas if I can maybe get down to eight candles or something and they don't all have to be amazingly good sellers it's that 80 20 rule if 80 percent of what you're doing does the work you still have a bit of range for everyone else but you might have two or three best sellers and the rest are just kind of there yeah there's um one candle company I've been looking at quite a lot on Amazon they started out quite recently Oco house or something but they've got a few on amazon and he's got one called wild forest and he i think maybe only launched a year ago on amazon maybe only launched a year ago in total but i've just seen that grow exponentially so it was selling maybe 50 a month of that one candle and now it's 400 a month and wow. it's just building i don't know just building that it's got very specific USP, the kind of lovely glass jars. I've seen it. I've seen. I know exactly who you mean. I've seen them on Instagram. And then in like a little cardboard one, I don't, I don't know. He's tapped into something maybe very specific, and people seem to be loving it. It's twenty five pounds for candles, so it's not cheap. No. And they come in lovely little boxes. But yeah, I've just seen that kind of grow. Whether it's a whole thing, they're sort of made in block Lomond, so it's got that kind of yeah. Scottish vibe. But it's just interesting seeing what the market does and how people react with certain things but yeah it's just mad so he's selling 600 700 candles on amazon obviously he's selling them other way like other places but but like you said it's the usp part like we'd said before we started recording i was talking about um how we initially launched and i was making concrete vessels and we had some issues with them they were like just not a hundred percent and so steadily i started swapping them out for glass and then now we do a stone i actually make them out of jesmonite which is just a more consistent material and i i, mm. I was able to work with it much simpler also there's no issue with you can um it's an eco resin you can rinse it down the sink you cannot do that with concrete <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely but... not do that the just the it just puts my mind at rest a little bit that I'm not working with concrete in the house. Um, mm. This is a completely different material, which is a lot safer all round. But 
I kind of moved away from that while we were trying to figure out how to use, how to find another kind of casting material and went into glass. And I feel like we lost something in doing that because our USP was the stone jars. And now yeah. I keep getting requests like, what do we do with the stone jar once it's finished? And um, do we do refills? There are multiple reasons not to do refills. As we know, uh, you've got to test the jar, uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. integrity of the jar and make sure it's not going to get too hot, etc. So much testing would go into, would the refill still be safe? How will it burn after you've already burned a candle in it? What if they put it through the dishwasher or what if they, you know, will the sealer come off or there's so many things, but I think that finding that thing that makes you different, that's definitely something that's been on, on my list recently is could we do something refillable? Could we do something that makes us different, that brings back the people who bought the first yeah. time? The refillable thing seems to be quite popular at the moment. There's a lot of people doing that, isn't there? It's, yeah. it's hard though. You want to do everything, but by doing everything, you, know, you dilute a lot of what makes you special and stand out. And you can't do everything well. You can yeah. do a couple of things really well, but if you start doing 10 things, that's 10% all taken away from. Totally. I don't know. That's what I think in my head. So. Totally. Well, I actually was looking recently at um, rather than a refillable jar, uh, a jasmineite jar that was large enough that would fit around a glass candle. So you know, like you would buy the the, the jar, oh, yeah. and then you would just fit in whatever candle you bought. So then you get rid of the glass candle at the end, but you constantly have the jar, the concrete jar, hmm. which was an interesting concept. And I thought that was potentially it still would be easier to stock that. You don't have to yeah. you know, have a wax a piece of wax on its own. The idea of having to ship that in the summertime. Having yeah, to keep it in, like yeah, I, that just doesn't sound like something I want to do. But it's definitely something that, like with the um, brand that you just mentioned, they've just they've got something that makes them a little bit special, and you need to find the thing that is sustainable for you to do. That is that. Yeah, just makes you stand out. They've only got like six cents, and maybe two. Of, well, one of them is doing the heavy lifting, but yeah, it's just that thing that makes you stand out and that resonates with people, and people go, yeah, that's a bit of me. That's kind of my story that I align with or something like that. Mm. Um, but touching back on your refillable thing, there's an idea I had for a while ago, which I'll share with you because I'm never going to get around to doing it. You ever see those um, like candle snow stuff? Like sand Literally. type. Yeah. Yes. So there's a company I came across and they're selling basically refillable candles and you buy a little pouch of it and it comes with a load of little wicks and you can basically put a candle in any jar. They yeah. could sell that as a standalone product and then you can put in put it into your concrete jars yeah i haven't really tested it, i haven't really played around i did buy some but i haven't really done anything with it and i think you can scent it but you wouldn't be able to scent it prior to shipping because i think it will get a bit funny but you can sell a little yeah. bottle of essential oil and that and they can mix it themselves and then well, at what wick point them. though is it because you don't know where they're putting the wick you don't yeah. know how like they're not going to necessarily heat the the wax to the right temperature there's so many variables in that that make me think it's a gimmick. It's not... Oh, you don't need to uh, heat it to melt it. You literally just pour it in and then stick a couple of wicks in and it's like an instant candle. And then that, how does the oil, how does the scent work? I think it might just evaporate. So I think you just put a little bit in and then mix it around. Yeah. I'll send you a link. Yeah, do. It it feels like a gimmick to me. It feels like if it was that easy, <laughs> it was that easy to make a candle. Um, but I do like the idea of that kind of thing where yeah. you can offer something that is a refill that is not difficult. Yeah, that's it. And it hits that kind of um multi use eco e vibe and not disposing of stuff for no reason. Yeah, so exactly. If you're making the really nice jars, you'd want to try and reuse them and do other things with them. Yeah, or... I almost feel like it puts people off buying them because they think, well, what am I going to do it afterwards? Like yeah. someone said to me this morning, I don't, I feel like I can't throw it away because it's so nice, but I don't know what to do mm -hmm. with it. So we've got lots of like, we've done in the past when we've done craft fairs um, and like markets and stuff, we've done um, them on the side with like, this is how you could use them after the fact, but maybe yeah. we need to make more of that. Like we need to make some reels and stuff saying like, this is how yeah. you can use the jar after. I did that with mine. I pay someone to do a little graphic of use it as a plant pot or use it as a yes. pot. 
stuff like that. But yeah, maybe you could go down a different route. There's a Tyler aromatherapy that she sells coffee cup candles, but you could maybe do cacti or succulents and you could sell a whole range of little plants that you can put in your concrete jars afterwards. It's such a good idea. Like we, I think we talked about it in a previous one, but her whole thing, it's mm. the same. It, you, you found she found one little gimmick, which is not a completely original idea. Mm. I've seen people do similar things before, and mm. yet it just took off, and that's become so huge for her. Um, it's fantastic, but it is, it just does really double down on. You need that that hook. Yeah, just one thing that hits people and resonates with people you just keep trying until something sticks i think you never really know i think she started off with sort of women's wellness which did quite well and then those coffee candles just exploded so yeah i actually after seeing her i actually contacted a couple of places in the local area to see if anyone would want to like collaborate you know like anyone that does and there's not really that many people who do i mean i live in doncaster which is like nowhere um it's near to sheffield um but there's not really a lot of places near here where people are creating things like that i'd love to find a local business to be able to do something with but candles and plants find find a local plant shop that you can get a discount to so they you buy a candle and then they get 30 percent off a cactus or something and they can stick it in their little pot I don't we think keep, anyone we keep saying we need to like do a a, dra- a a Saturday going around all the local garden centers being like, if you stock this, then you can say buy a plant and then afterwards. Or you could sell it with um some seeds and some soil and grow your own something. Have, I don't know. Have you seen the people that've got like the plantable labels? Yeah. That's actually a great idea. You could do that, plantable labels, and then they could just buy a bit of compost and they could grow their own plant in your little concrete pot. There you go. That's great. I'm going to use that. I'm immediately going to steal that straight away. Um, you can pay me back later. So. <laughs> um, we see we've we've got into so many things already. We've only got five minutes left on our time. Um, oh, wow. What what can we what what of value can we tell people in five minutes? What is like the the number one thing if you were going to start all over again? What is the number one thing that you would do immediately for marketing? I would pick a very specific set of people in niche, something that I'm interested in and something that I enjoy. I think rather than trying to pick something very broad and something not of interest to me, because it's hard to follow through and keep up with something if you're not interested in it. So I find something of interest, something that you enjoy, that's a bit of a twist, and then just go all in on that. Find a very specific set of people. So whether you're into meditation or something, maybe do a candle specifically for meditation or if you're into concentration and flow state, do something very specific and target a very specific group of people or, I don't know, writers, filmmakers, or something just that resonates with people and go all in on that and find that tribe of people and get them interested in your brand. And I think build up a bit of a following that become loyal to you. And then once you start engaging with those people, start replying to all the comments and start trying to make every single one of those people that buy from you feel a bit special so they're kind of incorporated in your whole brand and that kind of stuff so really yeah just double down on one specific set of people yes the niche i I mean just purely from the conversation we've had today i'm like i should have stuck with this is our you know the concrete thing is like that's our Mm -hmm. usp we should have doubled down on that we shouldn't have diluted i think we just panicked because we just yeah. didn't really know what we were doing within the first six months. We were like, I'm not going to be able to make enough jars to do what we want to do mm-hmm. for autumn and winter. And we wanted to try loads of things and we just kind of got carried away. So I think maybe for the remainder of 2024, we want to move back into more of the handmade jar element. And yeah. um, I'm definitely going to run with the seeds. We've, we're just launching a daisy chain scent. So I'm I'm going yeah. to order daisy seeds today. <laughs> I'm going to put them in the orders boom then you got yeah. a little plant that'd be wicked because all people need to do is get a little bit of compost so that's yeah and then you could get a little card that you put into it you get these printed quite easily explain what to do and how to grow it and that'd be quite cool and then you can get people posting on social media in a couple of months with their little thing get them to tag you with their plants and then get a discount I don't know so yeah. many different things you could do with it but yeah maybe have a look at your jars and work out how you can scale it so work out how you can make 20, 30 at a time and see how that goes. 
Yeah. If that is what working for you and that if that's what is a bit different and sells well, then double down on that. But I think that's the thing. Like you want to, you see other people doing stuff, so you want to try and copy them and do it. And you start, oh, that looks nice. I'll do that glass jar. I'll do that, and then you start diluting what you're doing. Completely. And the thing of wanting to do new things all the time. Because yeah. if you even if it sells really well and people are really loving it and that's what you're known for, if you make a hundred of the same jar, you're like, I never want to do this jar ever again. Yeah. And you want to try something new, and that's a mistake. Yeah. Keep, yeah. keep as we said in the previous one, keep on course is probably the best advice anyone ever gets. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, it will become boring doing the same thing over and over, but that's kind of more or less the reason you need to keep doing it and yeah, maybe zone okay. out when you're making 100 concrete jars 